In this screencast, we'll discuss the approach that we can use in order to determine transfer functions for a cascade control scheme. So what we show here on the block diagram on the screen is a relatively generic cascade control scheme. Depending on your process and what variable is being used as a secondary variable, this diagram can look a bit different. However, the procedure you'll use in order to determine the transfer function relating the output variable y to your set point value ysp would be relatively similar. Disturbances can also come into play here, which would use a somewhat similar method in order to find the transfer function y over d, where d would represent a disturbance. Just to kind of go through some of the nomenclature here, gm1 and gc1 would correspond to the primary controller and the transmitter that is reading the primary variable. gm2 and gc2 would represent the secondary variable, where the secondary variable and the secondary control loop responds much faster than the primary control loop. In order to do this analysis, when you have nested loops, is to start from the inside out. So what we're going to do here is focus on this block. We're going to, just for simplicity's sake, give a name to the stream coming into this block as I and to the stream coming out of the block as O. This looks very similar to a regular feedback control loop block diagram. If this part is O, that would represent all of these are O. So therefore, at the summing point here, we would have I minus O times GM2. After the sign point, it goes through two blocks, the secondary controller, GC2, and the valve, GV. Once it goes through there, we've reached this final point here, so this will equal O. So that we would have I, GC2, GV, minus O, GM2, GC2, GV, equals O. We would then move the O term over to the right-hand side, so this would leave us with I, GC2, GV, equals O plus O GM2 GC2 GV. By doing some algebra, we can easily find that the transfer function O over I, which is what we're trying to find here, would equal GC2 GV divided by 1 plus GM2 GC2 GV. So what we will now do is read draw the block diagram to show where we've moved to. So now again, we'll have the YSP that will connect to KM. We'll still have our summing point, which will go to the first controller. Recall that our input came after GC1, so this will be I. Then we'll have a block here, and what will come out is O. Here we'll just call this G1 for now, just to make our lives easier. We're doing some math with the block diagram algebra. Then we'll have GP, which goes to Y, and then this will go to GM1. What we can now do is block diagram algebra again. Just a note that G1 is this transfer function of GC2 GV over 1 plus GM2 GC2 GV. So when we do this block diagram algebra, it's actually very similar to what we just did. We'll have YSP times KM minus Y times GM1. These will both get multiplied by GC1, G1, GP. So after multiplying by all of these, we'll get to this point here, which will just be Y. So we can do the same thing as before. We'll have YSP times KM times GC1, G1, GP. We'll skip a step here. We know the Y term is going to go over, so this will be plus Y times GM1, GC1, G1, GP. So we'll factor out the Y, and this will leave us with our final transfer function of Y over YSP equals KM GC1 G1 GP divided by 1 plus GM1 GC1 G1 GP. At first glance, this transfer function doesn't look terrible, but the one problem here is that G1, which is present in both the numerator and the denominator, is its own transfer function, which is a little bit of complexity to it. What we now want to do is substitute in G1 here and simplify this a bit. So when we do this, we'll have that Y over YSP will equal KM times GC1 multiplied by GC2 GV divided by 1 plus GM2 
GC2 GV multiplied by GP divided by 1 plus GM1 GC1 again multiplied by GC2 GV divided by 1 plus GM2 GC2 GV and this will be multiplied by GP. For our denominator, we'll find a least common denominator, which is the denominator of G1, and we'll clean up the numerator and denominator a bit to end up with KM GC1 GC2 GV GP divided by 1 plus GM2 GC2 GV. 1 times 1 will just be 1. The GM2 GC2 GV will just be 1 plus GM2 GC2 GV. And we'll have our last term here, which will be GM1, GC1, GC2, GV, GP. This will be divided by the common denominator of 1 plus GM2, GC2, GV. Those denominators will cancel, and we're left with our final transfer function here of y over ysp, which equals KM, GC1, GC2, GV, GP, divided by 1 plus GM2, GC2, GV plus GM1. GC1, GC2, GV, GP. So here would be our solution. And again, important point to note here is two things, again, to reiterate. First is that there could be a number of slight modifications to this depending on the location of the secondary variable. Also, if there's a third level of cascade, a ternary control scheme. And additionally, the placement of disturbances in this could cause other transfer functions to be calculated. The second part is, is no matter what methodology you're doing, you're always going to want to approach this from the inside out. So start with your inner loop and do analysis and then work yourself through that. So in this screencast, we showed how we can do block diagram analysis for our process. A crucial point when trying to determine appropriate tuning parameters and determine stability ranges for our process.